Okay, so to appear on Time's list of most influential people does not only boost one's pride, but also recognizes your hard work as well. I believe that the whole nation and not just our parents will be proud of us. And... Yep! Without further delay, we are now connected with the one and only Professor Adi Utarini, otherwise known as Professor Uut, from Yogyakarta's UGM, Universitas Gajah Mada, who's among Times 100 Most Influential People of 2021. Good afternoon, Prof Uut. Thank you for joining us today. First of all, congratulations for this international recognition. Can you please tell us your thoughts after Times included you on this list of 100 Most Influential People of 2021? Thank you. So, Prof, you received a review from Melinda Gates regarding your achievements. How did you react? Yeah, well, first of all, um, uh, this this thing happens like once in a lifetime for me. So, first of all, I would I would like to say that it's it's an abundant blessing uh, from God. Uh, we say in my religion, Shukur Alhamdulillah, for this to happen, and I think this is an appreciation to the whole work to every, each of us, uh, which I'm proud of to be part of this. How do I feel by being reviewed? Um, Melinda and her colleague uh, came to visit our project in Yogyakarta back in March uh, 2017. And um, feel very honored. Um, and I believe this is her way also of recognizing the whole work, um, partners, collaborators, uh, Tahia Foundation, and particularly also the community in Yogyakarta uh, for its contribution from, from Indonesia. Uh, Professor Uud, you were selected courtesy of your Denki Fever Suppression Research. Out of all the topics that are out there, why did you focus on this health issue? Why do I focus on dengue? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, dengue is a very popular disease, actually, very common disease. And if you ask any Indonesians, I, I bet nearly everyone could mention someone who had dengue before, either in the from the family, neighborhood, or their colleagues. And always when we hear that someone has dengue, I think it creates a feeling of panicking. Yep. Uh, panicking and not just in the family but also in the neighborhood and yet there's no specific treatment until now very very interesting and um i heard that you suffered from dengue fever during your research and you also uh lost somebody very very close to you what other struggles did you encounter during this particular research and what were these particular results that you found were so groundbreaking well, yeah, I, I had dengue before, that's true. Uh, I had it twice, actually, but not during this research. So that was <laughs> way back in around 1990s when I studied medicine. Um, uh, and, and what is it like to uh, struggle in this research? I think, first of all, it's a, it's a long process. It's uh, more than 10 years to come to this stage. And for during that, that long process, I think we, what we uh, ultimately need to do is to um, continue ensuring that the, there's a high acceptance from the community and the stakeholders. Um, and also this, this kind of research also um, uh, needs a high committed multidisciplinary research team where no one is more or less important than others in kind of research. Um, obviously also need a high standard of research and procedures uh, involved in this research. And we are very, very proud to say that the result was uh, 77 reduction mm -hmm. of dengue in the areas with Wolbachia itis aegypti intervention. And even more convincingly, we have also 86% less hospitalization um, due to dengue in the intervention area. Okay, uh, Professor, uh, you just mentioned about uh, the Wolbachia technology. So, uh, so you're currently involved in a large team as, as part of the World Mosquito Program in Yogyakarta. How did the organization develop this technology, this Wolbachia technology, to control dengue fever? 
Yeah, so uh, it started in 2011, um, and at that time, this research was uh, conducted in phases. Uh, we are now we call it in phase four already. And so the f the first phase we started from learning about the uh, technology improve our capacity, our research facilities, and also understanding how the community understands dengue, and certainly also all the regulations that is uh, related to this research. And then gradually, uh, as we understand. Uh, <coughs> better and we are able to produce uh, mosquito eggs with giving the exact similarity mm -hmm. with the mosquitoes in the in the natural habitats so in terms of physical fitness in terms of genetic characteristics then we started with piloting uh, the release of uh, mosquitoes in small areas so small four small areas uh, and then once that is done um, and then we know the result that Wolbachia is able to sustain in the population. Then we move to our next step, which is uh, de deploying Wolbachia in a much larger uh, community, which is the Yogyakarta city. And that's when we did this uh, trial to really prove uh, how much efficacy can we get out of this technology. I mean, you achieved all this finally, um, the 77% of reduction that you talked about was from this particular uh, experiment, right? From this particular testing of Yogyakarta, divided into 24 clusters. I did some reading and it's very, very interesting because this is uh, the pioneering research uh, for the tropical region. I mean, um, uh, this is very, very interesting that you got to, you know, you got, uh, you got the data first, and now all the other, um, of course, health, health facilities in the regions are looking towards this particular data to, you know, um, mitigate dengue fever in their own um, specific regions. And you are a lecturer, an activist, and a piano player as well. Does these, you know, activities relieve your stress during research, or when you are research, you are usually this is it, I'm on the go, and I'm very, very focused. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's it's all about trying to get the right uh, balance that, that works for ourselves. So, yeah, and I, I just happen to, uh, to love music and also some sport activities to mm -hmm. keep, me, keep me healthy physically, mentally. And um, I always believe that with the spirituality and religion, this, this would certainly calm me down and also mm -hmm. at times when needed, uh, heal me also in uh, hectic times. Yeah. Uh, Professor, what kind of support do you think is needed from the government or community to boost local researchers to attain international recognition? Yeah. Um, well, I think in short, if we want to prepare next researchers or generation with really international recognition on research, then then perhaps the answer is to to have a, a world class research and innovation ecosystem mm. in the country. Um, because in this way, I think uh, all the researchers would feel that you know there's a, a very positive research atmosphere, the right ecosystem that they have, multiple funding schemes, uh, less bureaucracy, and also to make us feel that researchers uh, really allow uh, allowed to innovate. Yeah. All right, uh, Professor Ulu, since the Wolbachia technology was successfully developed, do you have any message for the Indonesian public to be free from dengue fever? Yeah, currently uh, with the safe technology, safe Wolbachia technology that has been also well accepted by the community and by the local uh, stakeholders, and with uh, proven, which proven that it works to reduce dengue, um, we hope that our government uh, and also partners involved, the private sector, philanthropists, mm -hmm. would be able to take this technology further to strengthen the dengue control program in priority areas suitable for the intervention. So we hope in this way uh, it will really reduce the burden of the community and create community free of dengue. 
You know, um, now that you mentioned you've done this uh, large scale, you know, testing and um, with very, very big results. Speaking of, we know that dengue is not just here in Indonesia. We, of course, perhaps one of the biggest contributors and best place to do the testing, but has other regions or other countries reached out to you also for help to start the same, you know, um, uh, Wolbachia related testing in their regions to make sure that it also would apply in their countries or regions whatsoever? Well, I think this is a golden opportunity mm. for Indonesia yeah, to yeah. lead uh, to lead really the uh, neighboring countries and even from this study now the policy at the global level are uh, hopefully will also be uh, more conducive to this. Um, um, because in, in the southeast um, region, um, Yes, this technology has been applied also in, in different countries, but uh, uh, the only study that proved the, this trial and that it works 70% is, is really coming from Indonesia. So it's really a good chance for Indonesia to be able to lead um, in, 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 in this country or in the neighboring countries. Professor Wu, I, I also have one question. Um, I'm, this is probably a little bit technical, but I really would like, to, I really appreciate it. If you could explain it in just layman term, right? Because uh, Wolbachia is a bacteria, correct? And uh, could you explain a little bit about this technology, how, how it works? Uh, I, I, we also been seeing um, there's, you know, Wolbachia green dots in on our screen earlier. And could you just please explain just a little bit on how this works? What happens yeah. to the mosquitoes? Uh, well, Bacchia is a natural occurring bacteria. Uh, uh, around us, everywhere we live, I think about 60% of the uh, uh, insects have Bulbachia, uh, but not in Aedes aegypti, uh, a mosquito that uh, brings dengue virus and transmits dengue virus to people. So uh, how it works, it's it's like a love story, you know. We we release the mosquito with Bulbachia when it's the male mosquitoes uh, uh, mate with the female mosquitoes. If the male mosquitoes have Bulbachia, then the egg um, cannot cannot grow. Mm. But if the female uh, uh, mosquito has Wolbachia and then mate with a male a male Aedes aegypti in the population, then all the offsprings they will all have Wolbachia. And if both have Wolbachia, uh, Wolbachia will be sustainable in the natural population. So uh, now it's already seven years since first we released uh, Wolbachia in the population and our monitoring says that the Wolbachia sustains, able to sustain itself. So that means that this, this intervention is really, uh, I would say, an ideal public health innovation because once you do it properly in mm -hmm. a certain period of time, there's no need to reapply the technology. Wow. Wow. Oh, Professor Uwe, yeah. thank you so much for the explanation. I think Yasha got his answer. He's very satisfied with it, with your answer. Uh, once again, congr congratulations on your achievement. And we wish you more success for future endeavors. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Professor Uwe.